الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين برادر و سستر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to introduce to you an eminent scientist and a scholar of Quran Dr. Morris Bukail Pronounced as Maurice Bukai, am I right, Doctor? Sir, sir, sir. Matter. Okay. Uh, is a native of France. He is a medical doctor, and his specialty is surgery. Sometime along his career, he became interested in the study of Quran, and he studied Quran in French translation, and later. He also read Quran in English translation, and he was pointed out the inadequacy of the translations. As a result, at age 50, he took upon learning the Arabic language, and he became a learned scholar in Arabic, and he found out the real inadequacy of the translations and problems. And being a scientist himself, he took upon himself to explain the biblical narratives and the Quran and science. And uh, he wrote his book in French back in 1971, I believe, which was later translated and published in 19 late 70s in English language. The book is the Bible. The Quran and Science is an excellent book, and then uh, he came across the problem of the uh, controversy between evolution and the uh, creation, and uh, he tackled that problem, and he wrote the book, What is the Origin of Man? And both the books are here in paperback, and. Uh, uh, some of the old version of this one will be available after the lecture outside and this in the original new version is avail will be available outside and those of you who would not have can order through your bookstore here we will have it available. Now he is writing a third book which is complete and ready for publication it's the medicine and the mummies of pharaohs and there you know the Musa al -Islam was born at one pharaoh and when he crossed the Red Sea, there was another pharaoh who was drowned and he has done extensive research and uh, he came up with conclusions that there are two different pharaohs, not the same one. Uh, I will not take any more time and you will know him through his lectures, Dr. Maurice Bukal. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you very much for your kind introduction. It is my, my pleasure to be among you this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. There is no human work prior to modern times that contains statements which were equally in advance of the state of knowledge at the time they appeared and which might be compared to the Quran. There is perhaps no better illustration of the close links between Islam and science than the Prophet's hadith. Seek after science even in China, which is a veritable invitation to man to enrich his knowledge. More significant, if it is possible, is the famous hadith, Midaidul Ulama, the scholar's ink is more precious than the martyr's blood. It comes as no surprise, therefore, to learn that religion and science have always been considered to be twin sisters by Islam, and that today, at a time when science has taken such great strides, they still continue to be associated and furthermore, certain scientific data are used 
for the better understanding of the Quranic text. What is more, in a century where, for many, scientific truth has dealt a death blow to religious belief, it is precisely the discoveries of science that, in an objective examination of the Islamic revelation, have highlighted the supernatural character of certain aspects of the revelation. When all is said and done, generally speaking, scientific knowledge would seem, in spite of what people may say, to be highly conducive to reflection on the existence of God. Once we begin to ask ourselves in an unbiased or unprejudiced way about the metaphysical lessons to be derived from some of today's knowledge, for example, our knowledge of the infinitely small or the problem of life, we indeed discover many reasons for thinking along these lines. When we think about the remarkable organization presiding over the birth and maintenance of life, it surely becomes clear that the likelihood of it being the result of chance gets less and less our, as our knowledge and progress in this field expand. To me, it would seem that the scientific progress made in understanding the fantastic complexity of higher beings provides strong arguments in favor of the opposite theory. In other words, the existence of an extraordinarily methodical organization presiding over the remarkable arrangement of the phenomena of life. In many parts of the book, the Quran leads in simple terms to this kind of general reflection, but it also contains infinitely more precise data which are directly related to facts discovered by modern science. These are what exercise a magnetic attraction for today's scientists. For many centuries, man was unable to study them because he did not possess sufficient scientific means. It is only today that numerous verses of the Quran dealing with natural phenomena have become comprehensible. A reading of all the commentaries, however knowledgeable their authors may have been in their day, bears solemn witness to a total inability to grasp the meaning of such verses. It, I should even go so far as uh, to say that in the 20th century, with its compartmentalization of ever-increasing knowledge, it is not 